Welcome to the first lecture in matrix theory. Uh, in this video lecture, I'll give you a very broad introduction to, to the subject so that you'll know what to expect in the coming weeks. So this course is going to introduce you to what is called linear algebra. Uh, most of you would have seen uh, matrices and linear algebra in some form or the other uh, in the past, uh, but, but in this course, will give a rigorous introduction to the subject so that uh, uh, your, your basics will become strong. So there are different ways of approaching this subject called linear algebra and hopefully we will we'll, we'll try to give uh, at least a, a sneak peek into each of these approaches. So the first is, is, is what I call the algebraic approach where we view uh, uh, linear systems or, or, or what you study are systems of linear equations and the goal is to uh, somehow solve systems of linear equations. So linear algebra can be in, in, in one sense thought of as uh, trying to address the problem of solving linear equations. And, and and when you say talk about problems like solving linear equations, uh, there is also the algorithmic aspect to the subject that is, so the, you, you can ask questions like is, so if someone gives you a system of linear equations, is that system solvable? And if it is solvable, can you give me an algorithm to find the solution or the set of solutions uh, of the system? So this is one question that we, will, we would like to address. Second question is, uh, when you look at it from the algorithmic approach, if someone gives you a matrix, how do you invert it? How to invert a matrix? Right. So, so these are very simple questions that you've already seen uh, in in your high school or undergraduate. Uh, but but you've seen you've you've been given perhaps formulas to compute the inverse of a matrix and so on. But we'll see a more principled approach. And suppose that you wanted to say write an algorithm or write a program to invert the matrix. Then how would you do this? The next question, perhaps one non-trivial question that you may or may not have seen in the past is suppose I want to take the square of a matrix or the cube of a matrix. Let's say that someone gives you a square matrix A and, and the problem is to compute say A to the hundredth power. So of course the, the, the trivial way is to take A multiplied by itself a hundred times. But this is very, very inefficient. So the question that we would like to ask is, can you compute A to the 100 efficiently? So without multiplying A 100 times, right? So, so we'll try to address this question. Now, there's also another way of looking at linear algebra and, it's for, and it is from a geometric perspective. So, when someone gives you a system of linear equations or let's say someone gives you one linear equation, what does it represent? So say we have a linear equation to x plus 3y equal to 4. Okay. So, so this linear equation basically represents a straight line on the plane. Right? If someone gives you another, uh, another set of equations, then this rep then that will represent another straight line. So let's say it is y equal to a one. Okay. So so each linear equation represents a line on the plane. So if someone gives you a system of linear equations and asks you to solve it, basically geometrically, what this means is that someone has given you two different lines and the and and wants to know 
or do the two lines intersect and if so at what point so the solution to the system of the to, so the solution to this system of linear equations is the point of intersection of these two lines right and this can be generalized so uh, in in three dimensions so if someone gives you a linear equation in three unknowns then this represents a plane in three dimensions and uh, each each linear equation represents a plane and the goal is to know whether these whether two three or more planes intersect and if so do they intersect at a, at a, at a single point or do they intersect along a line or so on and, and this can be generalized to higher dimensions so these so all these three approaches that i've outlined before uh, are, are have mainly have to do with euclidean space so you either look at vectors in or, or the three dimensional space or a two dimensional space or an n dimensional space and whatever i mean by space over here and and the goal and and what you want to know is uh, you, ha you have a system of linear equations which represents a line or a plane or a hyperplane and and you want to know and you want to answer questions regarding this now now all of this is for euclidean space the question is can we generalize this can we develop a more abstract theory which which of course answers all the questions above but also questions that we have not asked so far so when we say say linear or a linear system what do we understand by this so this is a linear system y equal to a times x or say y equal to 2x is a linear system so y equal to 2x is a, so y is a linear function of x and in general if x is a vector you may have you may say that a linear so if y is equal to some matrix a times a vector x then you say that y is linear in x so this is for say n dimensional vectors with with real coefficients uh, what we want to know is can this be can can we develop a completely abstract theory which doesn't assume that these vectors have, have real values or anything so 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 the abstract theory that we will try to develop will be extremely powerful and not just solve these questions but also other questions as well which will be useful for several problems so the kind of questions that we will try to answer in this course are the following so first we'll look at the problem of solving systems of linear equations So you are given say m linear equations in n unknowns, m linear equations in n unknowns right and the question that we want to answer is the following. So if I give you a system of linear equations the question is is this solvable is there a solution the second question so if if there is a solution then how many So if I give you a system of linear equations, then uh, can it have zero solutions? Can it have one solution? Can it have 10 solutions? Can it have 100 solutions? How many solutions can it have? And, and the problem of solving linear equations uh, arises in many applications. Right? So, uh, so, okay, so even before that, uh, now I put up two questions so if 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 there is a solution then the question is how many solutions does it have is it unique or is it not unique the second question is if there is no solution then can you compute an approximate solution
and that is what we wish to address in this course right and and the problem of solving linear equations arises in a number of applications and you would have already seen some of these in the past so for example uh, if someone gives you say a simple electrical circuit with uh, resistors and voltage sources is something like this R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 and this is say V1 and V2 and, and you want to find say say the currents along uh, certain paths or along edges or the voltage across certain nodes then how do, how do you do this? You would use KCL and KVL you would let's say call this current I1 this current I2 with this current I3 and then maybe use uh, KCL and KVL to set up a system of linear equations in I and V and R and, and ultimately by solving that system of linear equations uh, you would get to know the node voltages and mesh currents right. So that is one, one, exa one problem uh, which, which is an application of solving linear equations. Another application is the following. Let's, let's say that you have a, let's take the example of say data fitting, okay, curve fitting. Suppose someone gives you some data, uh, maybe uh, you, you've got this, say, say you're trying to predict uh, the, the, say the stock market and uh, you have a collection of X y values x1 y1 maybe uh, y1 is is the amount of uh, uh, perhaps y1 is the is the share price of, of some particular company uh, at time x1 and y2 is the price at time x2 and so on so basically you have some data points xn yn and maybe you want to approximate this by a polynomial, right? So, so if you look at x versus y, you are given some points. It could be kind of almost completely random. There's some some structure to it. And the question is, can you approximate this by a smooth curve? Right. So it's a problem of approximating a bunch of points by a curve and let's say that we want to approximate this by a polynomial we want to find a polynomial y equal to say a0 sorry, a0 plus a1x plus a2x square so on plus a m x to the m so you want to find a degree m polynomial which best approximates uh, these n points then the question is can you so 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 what is the best the best curve or the best choice of these coefficients a0 a1 a2 up to a m which approximates the set of data points that we have right so so linear systems and linear algebra has a number of applications uh, ranging from circuits to curve fitting to um, digital signal processing to machine learning to optimization everywhere. So, so wherever you go you will encounter linear systems and the theory that is developed here the tools that you learn in this course will be applicable everywhere else. Right? So go, coming back to the list of topics that will be covered in this course. Uh, the first we will see how, how do you solve a system of linear equations and while, while trying to develop a theory for solving linear equations we will also uh, see more abstract concepts of what is a vector space, 
what do you define a vector space what do you mean by basis dimension and so on so you so these are terms that that some of you may have encountered in the past some of you may not have encountered in the past but you'll be introduced to all of this in this course so the second question that we, so once we know how to solve linear equations we'll try to address the second problem which is finding powers of matrices So someone so suppose someone gives you uh, a 50 by 50 matrix A and asks you to calculate A to the 100 then can you do this efficiently on a computer right and, and this will naturally lead to concepts of what I call diagonalizability and eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we will see for what kind of matrices we can find this. Uh, efficiently right and the third topic that we will see is is this concept called singular value decomposition and and perhaps i can motivate this using the following example now in in many communication systems which have uh, particularly in multiple antenna communication systems uh, you can model the input output relationship so the input is, is what the transmitter sends and the output is what the receiver sends. So if the input is a vector, so we can model the input and output as vectors. I will denote vectors with, with an underline. So the output the, or what the receiver sees can be related to what the transmitter transmits, which I call x, using the following relationship y equal to hx plus z. Where, uh, where Z is, is represents the noise which is added by the channel and H represents some form of attenuation. Right? So H is a matrix, uh, Y is the output, X is the input. Now in digital communications you will see how, how do you decode symbols in the presence of noise and, uh, and, and in fact it will turn out that if you want to reduce the decoding complexity then then the best case H or the best scenario is when H is a diagonal matrix. Right? So if H is H1, H2 up to Hn, then it will be very easy for us to decode. So, so diagonal matrices are good, uh, but, but in reality, I mean, nature doesn't give us with, with a nice diagonal matrix. It will turn out that the H matrix that we see in practice are not diagonal. So the question is, can we do some pre-processing and pre-processing at the input and post-processing at the output so that we get a diagonal matrix in the end? So of course, we can always, if, if we know H, we can try to invert the matrix. But the question is now if H is not a square matrix, so in general H will not be a square matrix, then can you still somehow get a nice diagonal matrix uh, which you can work with. And it turns out that it indeed is possible. So given any matrix H, you can always find matrices U and V such that H can be written as U D V. For, for certain special kinds of, so even if H is not square, you can always write it as U times D times V, where D is a diagonal matrix and U and V are kind of special matrices, which we'll see later. So, uh, and, and in particular, the, the properties of U and V, which are helpful are that U and V are invertible. So you can always compute Y prime equal to u inverse h so the receiver can always post process it by multiplying by u inverse and and the transmitter can multiply by v inverse before transmitting 
so that the ultimate input output relationship will be d times x plus x where d is a nice diagonal matrix right so these are three main concepts that you will study uh, in this course so first you will see how to solve systems of linear equations and you'll see the whole a whole theory being developed uh, just by asking this question and then uh, we'll try to see how do we efficiently find powers of matrices uh, and and lastly we'll see this 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 notion of trying to convert a non square matrix into an approximate diagonal matrix so so this is this was a very broad overview of the course and uh, so and, and and with this you can start by viewing the first lecture that has been uploaded on piazza